Welcome to this week's episode of The Better Half. I'm Kendra D. St. Aubin, and this is Katie Hartley. And we're going to take a look back at some of the things that have been going on this week. Well, a rough one for the Cardinals. Congratulations to your Vikings, who got a win over the Cardinals 34-10. to It was a heartbreaker. The Vikings putting up 28 points in the first quarter. This is the fourth straight loss for the Cardinals. Kendra, what is wrong with this Arizona Cardinals team? Well, as we can see, some of the problems from these highlights, or as I like to call them, lowlights of the Arizona <laughs> Cardinals. Kevin Cobb really struggled. I mean, the offensive line was not that great, got pressure on him early, but I think he's got to figure out a way to get that ball off faster. And when he does get out of the pocket, he's got to be able to complete some throws. And I must have seen some different things than you because I think it's this offensive line that is just horrible. Cobb has been sacked 12 times this season, but it's more the pressure that I'm seeing that he's getting, and he's, he's just not able to make a decision quick enough Having been in this offense for such a short period of time, it really worries me. Yeah, it does worry me, but at the same time, I think at some point you have to quit blaming like no OTAs and everything and not mm -hmm. having time together because everybody was in the same situation. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to turn to a team that has a little more of a, more of a winning history. They ended the season with a loss, but how about the Diamondbacks this season? Yeah, so cool to see them make it to the postseason. I know that they didn't get a, a win against the Brewers in the end. I, my biggest takeaway from the season is going to be the Paul Goldschmidt call-up. I think Kevin Towers really took a big risk with this rookie. He was called up, made his debut in August. You know, he homered in Game 2 against the Brewer, Brewers and then, of course, had that huge grand slam in Game 3. What about you? Well, I think he did make a difference, and I think it'll make a big difference if he's with him the whole season. But I really liked Ian Kennedy. I think without strong pitching, you're never going to have the season that they had. And the fact that he finished 21-4 and a 2.88 ERA, I think, was huge for the Diamondbacks. And I think that was a big, big part of their success. Hopefully, this isn't kind of a one-and-done team. And hopefully, with the big expectations from the next year, they can pull it off again. Mm -hmm. And no tears for the Diamondbacks, but some tears in Tucson this week. Arizona head coach Mike Stoops being let go. Tears of happiness or but, sad? Well, for me, it's tears of sadness. I'd like to have seen Arizona keep Mike Stoops at least through the end of the season. I hate to see these college coaches be fired in the middle of the season like this. Now, okay, they're, they're not doing so hot this season. They have lost 10 of their last 11 games. But um, why do you hate it at this point? I mean, you really feel bad for him? He got like a multi-million dollar buyout. I, I don't feel bad for him, but I do, I do think that there is something to the loyalties of these college teams. I think that there's a lot that he could still teach some of these kids. In my opinion, he lost control of the team at the end of last year. But, you know, they should have either let him go at the end of last year after they lost, you know, the last five games mm -hmm. and they blew it in a bowl, but, or let him, let him continue through this season and fire him at the end of the season. I just hate to see it right in the middle of the season. He could still do a lot for these kids. I think it's a, it's a great decision to fire him in the middle of the season. I mean, for a recruiting standpoint, they have to have a guy in there. Even though they're not going to have the next head coach in line, they know that they're not going to have Mike Stoops, and they can go into those kids' homes and say, look, we know we had a terrible end of last season, a terrible start of this year, but we're turning things around. These are some of the head coaches we're looking at, and from a recruiting standpoint, I think that they had to do that, and I don't feel bad for Mike Stoops. And also the loyalty. I mean, these coaches don't have any loyalty to these schools either. You know, they'll take off and leave at any point for a bigger more expensive, you know, more money contracts. So mm -hmm. uh, either way, the Wildcats, it's a tough one. You know, it's been a tough year for them. Actually, tough last, like you said, last 10, 11 games. Yeah, absolutely. Well, on a lighter note, Tiger, a much lighter note. Tiger Woods, <laughs> great story from this weekend at the Fries.com Open. Tiger Woods getting something a little different thrown at him. He hasn't experienced too many hecklers. But this guy threw a hot dog, bun and all, at <laughs> Tiger Woods kind of made me laugh. I like this story. Well, I like this story. I think it's hilarious that Tiger Woods obviously can never stay out of the news, and this time it wasn't even his fault because, again, he was like near the way bottom of the board. You know, he wasn't even close to the leaders. But how about the guy, though? He chucks the hot dog with the bun, and it's not even close. He's like 15 feet short, and then he lays down on the green like he knew he was going to be arrested. I, I thought it was hilarious. And just so you know, it was an 18-foot birdie putt, and Tiger did miss the putt, unfortunately for him. Ah, what a great way to end that round of <laughs> golf, though. Well, that's it for us today on The Better Half. Follow her on Twitter, at Kendra620. You can follow me on Twitter, at FunKatie620. We'll see you next week for another webisode of The Better Half. <laughs>